So the first thing you want to do is find a shoulder. Obviously, his is pretty obvious, but you get some fluffy folks with some fluffy. extra tissue. And it might be a little bit like, is this tissue, is the shoulder actually up here? So anyway, first thing, find the shoulder in the first place, okay? The next thing you want to do is position the arm in the right spot. So anybody who's, I don't know if anybody been to Cadaver Labs? No? Yeah? Okay. Got to on the camera. Um, so the first thing you want to do is position the arm in the right spot. The first way they teach you is to put, your, put the person's arm across their belly. So I'm guessing a lot of the folks you run into don't have flat bellies like this. So what you're doing is you have a biceps tendon that runs in here and you're rotating it in. You're getting it out of the way. The 15 gauge hole is not, that's a structure you don't want to hit with that. So first thing you're going to want to do is try this. If the person has, you know, is pregnant, has ascites, is obese, and you start doing this, now you're just rotating that back out towards where you're going to insert. It's not the ideal way to put their arm. Are you doing CPR or something else? You don't want arms there. So my preferred way of doing it, and it just gets everything out of the way, is rotating the whole arm in, not just the hand, and putting the back of the hand towards the thigh. Okay? Stick her under. Like that. The nice part about that is, especially if they're laying down, is, and I'll show you with him, is you can either hold it with your knee or kind of do a hip check to hold it that way. This is important only when you're doing the insertion. Then their arm can go back to resting however it's gonna rest, okay? So now you need to find your landmark. First things first, the ulnar aspect of your hand, this outside of your hand here, first one goes in this crease, okay? So you just put your biceps tendon in there to get it out of the way, so now put your hand there so you don't go there, okay? Nice work, guys. So the first thing you wanna do is put your first ulnar aspect of your hand and your first border in this crease, okay? The next one is gonna be an imaginary shirt sleeve seam. At this point, they probably won't have a shirt on, so like this, okay? Hands up like that, and then drop your thumbs down, okay? and start rubbing with your thumbs and cover some, cover some space here, okay? And don't walk because you might miss the drop off. What you're looking for, and actually his is good because you can kind of see it, is you want to see where it drops off right there. I know, sorry, am I digging? Depending on the person, you're gonna have to do a little digging. So you want to find where the, the ball drops off the T, basically, okay? And it's gonna be easier to do it on each other instead of yourself, so we'll do this. So now you've made three borders. You had a border here, you had a border here, and now you have a border here. Next thing you want to do is clean it, if you have the time and you can. And then the insertion is two centimeters above it. Okay? So in, start rubbing. Found my drop off, two centimeters above it. It's my spot. Okay? You have a space <coughs> about this big to aim for. It's not a perfect science. Okay? So, I mean, you've got, you've got some space. You've got some room for... So I drew this picture and I asked her which of these is correct. And she said, they're all correct. They're all fine. So, you kind of got a big area to go for. You figure, so this one's aimed in a better direction. You're probably going to get a better flow rate. This one's heading a little bit across, so you probably aren't going to get a great flow rate. They're still in the head of the humerus, heading towards the proximal humerus. It's still okay. If they have nice, thin shoulders, they got big puffy shoulders, it's still the 45 millimeter needle, anybody over 40 kilos. So grandma, 18 year old kid, always this needle, and it's always going all the way into the hub. So all of you all that have done the proximal tibia, you know that you need to stop once you lose your resistance because you don't want to head through the other side of the bone. You don't have to worry about this. It's a big space and it goes all the way in. So needle selection's easier, it's always going to be this one on your adults. And the placement's easier because it's going all the way in. Okay, so it makes it a little bit easier, especially under <coughs> under stress. You don't have to have the control that you need that you have to have for your tibia. I'll show you what that means. Don't worry. The question about the site. Do you yep. use alcohol? Or so anything that you would do to prep an ID site, because it's perfectly inserted, we put chloroprep things in our kits. Um, so whatever you would think is appropriate to clean an ID site. I told you, okay? chloroprep. Uh, we throw them in our kits. Uh, he's so, a surgical tech. He don't know better. So for him, like I said, in this, I would probably take his arm, put it in here, and then you can either do a hip check, or if they're on the ground, you can put your knee up to hold it or get somebody to do it for you. But you want their arm to stay in this position while you do the insertion, okay? You come up, find your crease, find your shirt seam, and start rubbing. But yours is super obvious. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Rotate. Rotate in. Okay, so you're just coming in, you're doing this, and you're rubbing. You can find the drop-off, stop, and do your cleaning. Okay? Those are good, good humorous. The next thing is your 45-degree angles, okay? Basically think you want all your meds and everything you're doing to go to the core. 
okay? So you're heading this direction. So this gets you at 45. Here, you're going straight to the other shoulder. It's not gonna do you much. You do this and you're heading straight down his arm. You wanna go this way because you're heading towards the core, okay? So it's your first 45. The second one is up off the table. You don't wanna go in at a flat angle and you don't wanna go down towards his back. You wanna go in towards his core. Does that make sense? So 45 millimeter needle at 45 degrees and 45 degrees. Make sense? And then this is your insertion. So when you're doing your landmarks, okay, I got my spot, I'm doing my cleaning. Hopefully somebody will take the cap off my needle for I'm me. not now. Yeah, not now. <laughs> no, you just gotta push hard. I'm working at that every time you move it. Don't worry, the cap's on it. Then this is your angle. So you've got a couple options. One, you can do it this way, right? You don't have to be where everybody else is up here. This is where I would be doing an IV. I'd have his arm out, I'd be doing something here. So now you're here, you've got your, your sight, and you can do your insertion this way. Or if it makes it easier to do your 45 degrees, you need about 10 seconds to get up here and put it in. And now you can walk out of the way and you can do the rest of it. So where is the uh, chromium process at that we've got to worry about? Yeah, that's oh. what, this one. No, oh, that's all right. Okay. Do you have scars? Would you yeah, be somebody that we'd have to be afraid of? No, it's. So it feels like there's it's right no here hardware. on him. Okay. On yeah. another person, you might not be able to feel it this obvious. So here's the thing. So once you get it in, his arm can go back to resting position, okay? What he can't do is abduct more than 45 degrees. This picture, your needle, so there's a hole right here. Your needle running into one of these bones is going to bend the needle, okay? So rotating your shoulder out. So if you have somebody that has a humeral IO in, you're gonna either wanna tape it to their side, put their hands across their belly and tie them together, or if they're on a backboard and you have them strapped, obviously their arm will stay in. But you don't want this to happen, okay? They can do this. If they wake up and they start doing this, this is fine. It's just when it gets out like this that you run into the, the structures that could bend the needle. Does that make sense? So I mean, it really is, like you put it in, you walk up, and this person there. And two centimeters okay. above that. Yep. That would be my angle. And again, I have a spot probably about this big on the head of his humerus to go for. So it's not an exact science.